Hello and welcome. Please pause this video and try the problem on your own. Okay, so they tell us here that we're given the function f of x. I like to write these things as we go along, so I'm going to write it as I, as I read it. f of x equals negative x squared plus 8x plus 9 and state whether the vertex represents a maximum or a minimum point for the function and explain your answer. Well, first of all, um, one thing to note is that when we have a parabola or quadratic function written in standard form, like this, where x squared is first, so we would say f of x in standard form would be a number a times x squared, so x squared is first with its coefficient, in our case one is the co negative one is the coefficient, excuse me, and then we have the number b times x, and then finally c, a number all by itself. This is standard form. And what's important to realize is that if this number a, right, so if a is less than zero, in other words, if it's negative, then the parabola opens downward, right? We say it opens downward, or like a frown, right? Think of a person, they're hanging out here. Um, oops, I gave him a smile, what am I doing? Oh boy. So if you think about this as a frown, here's what I mean. I'll move this over so you can see. If this is their mouth, it's frowning, right? So here it'll be their, their nose, right? This is their nose, eyes, and their frown. So if A is negative, we have this frown right here and it opens downward. If A is zero, um, it cancels out this whole term. And what we might have left over is this. And we could possibly have a line, not a quadratic, because that, that would just be a linear function. So if A is zero, we're not going to look at that case right there. We're going to say if A is positive, what we have is a smile, like this. And in that case, you can think of their nose and eyes right there. So what does that mean in the context of this problem? Well, I wouldn't use that language to answer this question, but I would say here I notice that A is negative one, so it's less than zero. Thus, the parabola opens, you can say the parabola opens downward. And that just means if you, if you see the direction of its opening, right, as it goes down right here. It's narrowest at the top, narrow, narrow, wider, 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 it opens downward. I mean, so when you say that, use that language right there, it shows us that you understand the, uh, the direction of the parabola. And also, the vertex is this turning point in both situations. So in a frown, the vertex represents a maximum. In a smile, the vertex represents a minimum right here. And that's one way of explaining it. You could, you could say if it's opening downward, the vertex is the maximum point. Um, and here, you might find the vertex for fun. That might help you in your explanation. What you could do is find the vertex and then uh, plug in an x value before the vertex and after to show that the points to both sides of the vertex are indeed less than the height of the vertex. So let's just do that really quickly so you get a sense of this. So how do we find the vertex? Well, it's First of all, um, we want to find what's called the axis of symmetry. And that is the line on which the vertex lives, the vertical line. And that, that equation that gives the axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. So here, b is 8, so negative b is negative 8. 2 times a is 2 times negative 1. Right? And that's negative 8 over negative 2, which is 4. Right? So this just means in our parabola here, let me, just, sorry, let me just draw an x and y axis here. So we have x and y. One, two, three, four. The axis of symmetry is going to be a vertical line at four, which is what we just found. And what that tells us is that the parabola is symmetrical around this line right here. We don't know exactly how tall it is, but the vertex is on it somewhere. And then it opens downward in some way. Right? We're not exactly sure how it opens yet. But we know it's going to happen open downward. We know the vertex is the maximum. And it's on the axis of symmetry, the line x equals 4. So then to find the vertex, and again, the axis of symmetry is just halfway between your roots or any two points of equal height. To find the vertex, we take this x value of 4 and plug it into our function. That will give us the height of the vertex. Because we know the vertex is some point 4, comma, blank. Right? We know it. If we enter an x and find y, that's the point that represents the vertex. So what is f of 4? In other words, if we plug in 4 to our function, what do we get for an output? Well, it's negative times x squared plus 8x plus 9. And here, if we plug in 4, be very careful here 
Um, minus x squared means you're subtracting x squared. In other words, you're just squaring the x. So here it's 4 squared, but you're subtracting 4 squared. So it's going to be negative 16, right? We're subtracting 4 squared, we're subtracting 16. Plus 8 times 4, or 32. And then finally, plus 9, right? So negative 16 plus 32 is what? What's 16? Plus 9 is 25. That just means the vertex is at the point 4, 25. So if we plug in 4, we get a, the height of 25. What we could do to support our answer is plug in other x values and show that their height is lower than the vertex. For example, and one easy point to plug in, and this will definitely shift my sketch here, I should have thought about this, sorry, when I was sketching it, is that the y-intercept is 9. In other words, f of 0 is 9, right? Because f of 0 would equal negative 0 squared plus 8 times 0, or 0, and then plus 9. And negative 0 squared, of course, is just 0. 0 is 0, and then the f of 0 is 9. That means the point here, the y-intercept, should be 0, comma, 9. So I'm going to quickly re-sketch our parabola. Sorry about that. So let's move this up here and re-sketch our parabola, because I want you to get a sense of what this thing looks like. So we have, let's say, our y-axis and our x-axis. And we know a bunch of stuff about this problem. We know already that the vertex is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 25, let's say, up here. right? We know the vertex is at 4, 25. We know that the y-intercept is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here, definitely not the scale. Oh, boy. Let me fix that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm a little bit happier with that. And we know then, if we can sketch it, is across the, the y-intercept, right here, come up to the parabola, turn around, and then open back downward. It should be symmetrical around the axis of symmetry. Right? That's why we call it the axis of symmetry here. And that's this vertical line, oops, x equals 4, which I'm having a hard time drawing. Oh, boy. There we go. So this is a decent sketch, but we're just supporting our answer that the vertex is the maximum. I don't think you need to go this far, but I'm, I'm just showing you alternate ways of, of doing it. And then I would just plug in some x value larger than 4 to show that it also has a lower height than the vertex. 9 is lower than the vertex, right? The vertex is way up here. Plug in any point above 4, right? For example, if I plug in um, 5, that will work. I'll show that the height is less than the vertex here. So what point would that be? 5 comma 1. In other words, what is f of 5? Let's find that one out. f of 5. f of 5 just means we're plugging in 5 for x. So we have negative 5 squared plus 8 times 5, or 40 plus 9. Now negative 5 squared is negative 25, right? Because again, it's 5 squared, and then we're subtracting it, so it's negative 25, plus 40 plus 9. So that means that f of 5 here equals negative 25 plus 40, which is 15, plus 9, which is 24, right? So here we have 5, 24, lower than the vertex. So you can keep confirming this in all of these ways. Probably the best way, again, is just to go back to originally what you observed about the a term here, how it's negative and it opens downward, therefore the vertex is a maximum. Now, here in part B, uh, they have a very specific request. They want you to write f of x in vertex form by completing the square. So first of all, what is vertex form? Well, vertex form is not standard form, right? Again, standard form is when you have it set up so it says ax squared plus bx plus c. And this form is awesome for many reasons. I love it because it makes it very easy to find the roots, right? You can use the quadratic equation quite easily by plugging a, b, and c, and so forth. Uh, you can find the vertex quickly as well, not as quickly as the vertex form. But it's a really helpful um, tool in graphing a parabola from the equation. Vertex form, however, I find very useful uh, in a kind of an opposite way. If you gave me a graph um, and I knew the vertex, I can quickly find or make the equation that represents that parabola. Um, and you can use both equations in, in, in interchangeably in different ways. But I feel like the vertex form, which says a times um, x minus h squared plus k, um, I feel like this form is really useful when you're given the graph and you have to find the equation. 
Um, and what you have to realize is it's so beautiful about this form right here is the vertex always equals the point h comma k. In other words, if it said, let's say, um, x minus 5 squared plus 2, then the vertex would equal 5 comma 2. If it said x plus 5 squared, right, um, let's say minus 2, then the vertex would equal y. Well, in order to get a plus 5 here, we have to be minus a minus 5 because it's of the form x minus h. So that means that the vertex would be a negative 5 comma negative 2 here because here we have plus k, but they're plus a negative is minus 2. So here the vertex would be negative 5, negative 2. In other words, you can look at vertex form immediately and know the vertex is this number 5, in this case, and 2. Here, negative 5 is the opposite of this value here, and negative 2. So that's one way of looking at it. It doesn't even matter what a is. If a is 2 or 5 or whatever, the vertex is still going to be those points. So it's very useful if you know only the vertex um, it's very useful to create an equation from there. So what they want you to do is turn standard form into vertex form, which sounds intimidating, but it's actually, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, here's what I mean. So we take f of x equals negative x squared, I think it's, what was it, plus 8x, yes, plus 8x plus 9. So this is what they give us. So the first thing you want to do is complete the square. Um, in other words, you want to get a trinomial, one, two, three terms, trinomial, that is a perfect square. So the first thing I usually do personally uh, to do that is I take away this constant term on both sides, right? That's my first move. You don't have to do that first. That's what I like to do. So we have f of x minus 9 equals negative x squared plus 8x. And I like to do that first move because now when we complete this square, I find that I make less mistakes. Um, so we're about to complete the square. But before we do that, I don't like this negative sign right here. That throws me off. I want this to say positive x squared, and the problem for me becomes a lot easier to deal with if I can turn that into a positive. So I multiply everything by negative 1. What will that do? Well, f of x becomes negative f of x. Negative 9 becomes plus 9. Negative x squared becomes x squared. And negative 8 a positive 8x becomes negative 8x. Now, how do we complete the square? Well, if you remember to complete the square, we take the b term, right, whatever it is, divide it by 2 and then square it. And then we add it to both sides to make a perfect square. So negative 8 is our b value. Negative 8 over 2 squared. Negative 8 over 2, what's that? What's negative 4? And negative 4 in parentheses, we square everything, the negative sign and the 4, if it's in parentheses, is 16. So here we need to add 16 to both sides to create a perfect square. Negative 8x plus 16. We add to both sides. We want to keep our equation balanced. 9 plus 16 is 25. And now we're almost done. So here we've created a perfect square. So we can factor it quickly. Um, something squared, right? So here it's going to be x minus 4. If you think about that, uh, minus 4 and minus 4 multiply to positive 16 and add to negative 8. So this is our something squared makes this perfect square trinomial. Now to finish, Right? We want f of x all by itself. We want that because that's how our equation reads. If we go back to our vertex form up here, notice how f of x is all by itself. We have the x minus something squared. We need to find our a value and we need to establish k. So how do we do that? Let's just clip this and bring it down so you can see it. Okay, so that's our goal is to reach that form right there. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to get my k value over here, this constant value, subtract it over. So we have negative f of x equals x minus 4 squared minus 25. And we're one step away because we don't want to know what negative f of x is, we want to know what positive f of x is. So again, I multiply everything by negative 1. And f of x equals negative, parentheses, x minus 4 squared plus 25. And just to confirm that this matches our work so far, what's the vertex? Well, the vertex is the opposite of negative 4. It's always the opposite of whatever this sign for this number is, which is 4. And then 25, which is exactly what we found before in our graph. So there's a lot going on here. Um, but again, you're, you're converting into vertex form because it's, it's really awesome to be able to use that as a tool when dealing with parabolas. It becomes 
in, it's incredibly useful. Thank you.